Hello everyone and welcome back to Beyond the Apex. In today's episode we're in Austin, so it's the US Grand Prix, one of, we've got obviously Vegas to come, but yeah, so first of all let's talk about F1 Academy. Absolutely. I think it's <laughs> very important that we talk about this because it's the first time we've had it broadcasted. It's right? first time broadcasted, first time on the same race weekend as, yes, F1, as F1 as well yeah. um, and obviously next year all the races are going to be on the yeah. same weekend and they're all going to be broadcast as well but yeah. Um, yeah obviously we had three races Yes. and Marta Garcia won the championship. Yeah I mean yeah mm. um, I will also say um, Bianca isn't it? Bianca, Bianca Bustamante yes. yes. She obviously got accepted onto the McLaren driving mm. program which is quite mm. a big thing I mean absolutely obviously all the teams are trying to push for mm. that equality um, in, in, in the way that they operate but mm. yeah that's really good to see that she's kind of stepped up to one of the top definitely teams. Um, I mean obviously next year all the teams are going to have at least one, uh, uh, one driver um, of the 20 car 18 car grid no 14 car grid I think in um, no no four car, four teams four cars a team so I think sixteen cars so each team's gonna have one driver from F one mm -hmm. um, obviously McLaren have gone early got Bianca with Demente which I think is a very good um, signing for them so. um, she has a very good chance of winning obviously I think she's top five this year mm -hmm. um, but yeah uh, Mars Garcia is off to Formula Regional as well um, which is very good for her I think with Prema because she was racing for Prema mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Very yeah, good stuff. Very good start. So obviously we'll move on to now obviously the F1 side of it. It was a sprint weekend. It was. So let's just quickly talk mm. about what, I mean we've not got a lot to say about the sprint mm. race in general but what did it tell us about Yeah, I mean it mainly just told us that Max had a lot of pace. Um, obviously in the current sprint format we have the main quality on a Friday, we have the sprint day on the Saturday and then Sunday. In the quality, Max did horrific. Uh, well, he did well, would have been on pole, but then his track got deleted. Mm -hmm. uh, so he started seventh, but the sprint basically told us that he was going to climb up the field. Um, there was no doubt about that. It was just a kind of when rather than if. Yeah. Um, but it also told us that the top uh, three teams, apart from Red Bull, Ferrari, McLaren and Merck, were all very evenly paced, and it was going to kind of lead to a very good race. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And going on from that, we'll talk first of all obviously about Red Bull. Like mm. you said, it did show that he, they had pace over every single other car mm. on the grid. Um, but maybe not the best quality performance. No, from them. it really wasn't. Um, and look, I think even though Red Bull have been on top of a lot of things, I think quality is the main area where they have struggled yeah. in quotation marks. They haven't like they they haven't been been knocked out, apart from Checo, mm -hmm. but they did have a very relatively bad quality. Obviously, Max in P7, I think Checo was in P11, he didn't even get through to Q3, which again doesn't help his case. Doesn't help his um, case. But yeah, obviously, they had fantastic race pace with yeah. Max, stormed through the field, and eventually finished only a second ahead of Hamilton, but I think he was managing an issue as well with his brake pedal um, yeah. throughout the entire race. So, <laughs> with that, just shows how insane he was. Yeah. Um, but also very poor comeback from Checo. Yeah. I mean, he started P11, I think he ended P7, P6. Um, and we will talk, I think we'll talk at the end about the um, Haas um, appeal, which yes. is happening as we speak. Yes. Um, obviously, we're filming this three weeks later, but we'll yeah. talk about that at the end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, was a very, very poor comeback from Checo. It was, it was. And going back on to the, the Haas appeal, mm. um, that was all to do with turn six track limits. Yes. So, um, yeah, we'll talk about it more, obviously, because mm. we know a lot more because we're doing it three weeks later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not a very good comeback, especially, you know, whatever's going to come out of this oh appeal, it will really be even... I, I can sense it's going to be even worse comeback. I really mean. do think it... Well, it, it wouldn't have been a comeback. It would have been P11 to P11. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. P11 to disqualify. Yes. <laughs> but, oh, um, well, yeah, yeah but if we uh, go on to Ferrari... Yeah. Classic Ferrari. Classic. Horrific strategy with Charles. Horrific yeah. strategy. Um, and look, I don't know why they kept him out on a one stopper. It was clear in the race that they it would have just been a pick for slaughter. Yeah. Um, and look, they had the four fastest car, had a chance of the podium um, with the quality they had, and completely threw away. It's a shame. It's a shame. I mean, to, to think that a strategy is the only thing. Holding them back. It really is at the moment. Respect. I think, yeah, and especially with the new upgrades that I think they brought in Mexico, so we'll talk about that there. Mm. But 
They were nearly, they're nearly in every other bit apart yeah. from their strategy. And when Ferrari get their strategy together, more than likely they're on the podium. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And it's, it is a shame, but they have got great quality pace though. Well, they had this weekend. They have fantastic quality pace and we'll talk about it in the next one. Yeah. But yeah, that is really one of their strengths. Uh, yeah. It always has been, obviously, we saw last year as well with Charles getting about 15 million podiums. Yeah. Uh, pole, not poles. Uh, oh. Yeah. Poles, Poles, not podiums. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, they did get a podium this weekend yeah. in the end um, with Carlos mm. uh, with the two disqualifications. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was an okay weekend. Not great. Yeah. Nothing to shout about. No. Um, no. But something more to shout about was Merck's weekend. Yeah. Because fantastic race pace. Yeah. Really, they were really on top of it. They really brought it to Max this weekend. Um, and even though kind of they their quality pace is improving, it's still poor, and that is what's letting them down. Um, but yeah, look, they're they're getting on top of things. Yeah, and obviously we talked about the disqualifications, mm -hmm. meaning that Carlos got a podium. But uh, one of the big things from this weekend was, um, oh God, Lewis was disqualified. Yeah, which was huge from P two. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because obviously he's in a tight battle with Checo for P two in the drivers. Yeah. And that's considerably let him down. Yeah, and obviously the disqualifications were all to do with the floor of the car. Yes. More, you know, in terms of specification, it can't be worn. Like, mm. if it's worn too far, then it, that's not, you know, it doesn't comply with the regulations that the FIA set out. So, when they went to scrutineering, they found that, that was it Lewis and? So, it was Lewis and Shull who Lewis got found, Charles. and I think they tested six cars. Um, but I heard Martin Brundle saying something, I think it was on the Mexican Weekend Grand Prix. Uh, Mexican Grand Prix weekend um, about how some teams were running their cars higher and driving them differently in order to avoid this penalty. Yeah. So saying it's unfair is a little bit harsh because yeah. it's not. Other teams were doing, were taking measures in order to avoid having this penalty yeah, because it is a very very strict rule. Yeah. Um, and even though it was, I think it was a fifth of a millimeter or something or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it was so stupid. It was over, it was over five percent of what they're allowed. Yeah. So the the penalty was granted. It was, and I think it was fair. I think it, mm. obviously, like you're saying, if some teams chose to not take the well, take the risk and and mm. make sure they avoided the penalty, then the other teams, well, that was their. Exactly. That was their risk that they were to take yeah. up by doing that. It was it was the risk in terms of trying to get they, they took the risk to try and get performance and the risk went too far. Yeah. And, and it's such a shame because like you said Mercedes it was a great great race pace it from was them. Great race P2 pace. and a mm. shame to be disqualified from that, especially Absolutely. you know, trying to battle Perez. Yeah, in, and, in, the, in the drivers. And especially in their constructor battle as well, because Ferrari's catching them up quickly. Yeah. And if <laughs> if it weren't for the disqualifications, they easily would have outpointed Ferrari this weekend. So again, in terms of that, this could have huge monetary implications as well. So running that car lower really did significantly hinder them this weekend. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll go on to Alpine now. Um, yeah, I mean the first lap incident. Yeah. Lock on. We literally just watched the highlights yeah. and had to go through it, but. Um, it was it was poor from him. Yeah. And look, yeah. He, I think they said in commentary that I think he's got the highest amount of retirements this season. Yeah, and he's it's, kept it's, that streak going. He's kept that streak going. Um, and yeah, look, it was just disappointing. Um, yeah. it, it was a racing incident, but it was predominantly Probably. lock on. And look, at the end of the day, it hurt him severely. Yeah. Um, but from a, a bad race to a good race, Gasly P six. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it's really great to see from Alpine. I mean, mm. we've got we've seen ups and downs from the whole season, but. Yeah, for him to get P6 and off on not finish, it's a great result for yeah. him. Um, but yeah, right, so we'll take a break and we'll go on to McLaren. Okay, so we move on to McLaren. I mean, they were so close we to are getting, win. We are getting closer and closer to getting Lando this win. And it is so frustrating as a McLaren fan, because when he took the lead, I jumped with joy. And look, it looked like we had the pace to get that win. Yeah. Unfortunately, even the Mercs were quicker than us. Um, mm -hmm. But look, Lando couldn't have done any more. He tried his hardest, and it was also a shame for Oscar on the first lap, because otherwise, genuinely, he would have been top six mm -hmm. in that car, um, especially ahead of Charles, because he was left out there to dry. Um, but look, we're doing so well at the moment, obviously with disqualification. Another P two for Lando, another podium in the row in a row, and look, it's, it was a great race. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm. it's just it's looking better for McLaren. E each race we get, it's looking yeah. even better. It's, it's getting like, looking closer and closer yeah. to this win, and hopefully before the end of the season, Lando can get his first win. Fingers yeah. crossed. Definitely. Okay, we move on to Alpha Romeo. 
Meh. It was another meh race. Yeah. Um, they were in the fight for points. Um, yeah. Bottas was fighting around that P11 mark and with the disqualifications would have gotten the points. Yeah. Um, but look, he was just outside and the, the quality pace still isn't there for yeah. um, Alfa Romeo. They're still kind of going out in Q1 um, and they really need to up that because their race pace isn't anything to shout about and therefore they're just kind of running outside the points. Definitely, I think they, they need to up their quality pace to be able to you know, fight for the points mm. in the races because otherwise they just can't get up there. They can't. We're not, we're not seeing that. We kind of like lose them in the in the yeah, bottom of the you know. They're kind of just running P twelve, P thirteen, and the problem is as well is that they don't have one of those shouty drivers to yeah. get them to kind of outperform the car. There's, there there isn't an Alonso in that car. There isn't. I think even Checo would do a lot better than uh, Bottas at the moment in that car because he always outperforms a mid car, whereas. Yeah. Bottas always kind of did better in a better car, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean it was just another mere weekend. It, it, we're often saying this, but um, yeah, it was just yeah. Yeah, just meh. Um, mm. So we're going to Aston Martin now. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, they brought the upgrades for this race weekend, yeah. um, and at the end of the day, it was a stupid decision too because it's sprint weekend. They only had one practice session to somehow rein in these upgrades and get a setup. Yeah. It was at the end of the day. It was a test session. Um, they took the upgrades off of Stroll's car. Um, he started from the back and somehow got the points. I, how? Why hasn't he been doing this all year? Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, fingers crossed. Aston Martin can get on top of those upgrades and uh, yeah, yeah, get them sorted. Definitely. Um, okay, we'll move on to Haas now. Oh, talking I mean, about long-awaited upgrades yeah. not working. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, they really didn't come to fruition this weekend. Yeah. Um, and look, it was a sprint weekend, so it wasn't always good. They weren't able to get the setups, so yeah. on and so forth. Nico was close to the points, um, and obviously with the Haas appeal, mm. uh, he would be P7. Yeah. Um, so fingers crossed yeah. that works, because then my hype for the last two months would have been worth it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, it just simply wasn't enough. It wasn't It wasn't enough. I think the appeal is the only thing <laughs> yeah. that good from that weekend for them if it comes out good mm. for them. Um, but we'll move on to Alfa Tauri now. Um, oh. I mean, Sonoda P8. What a race. Look, he is banging in these results. That Alfa Tauri yeah. looks like it's finally actually getting some pace. Yeah. I mean, on simulations, it kind of looked like the fifth quickest car, yeah. um, which is a massive shock. Like, yeah. if, if, if they can keep this pace, they could be on for P7 in the constructors, even yeah. though they're currently last. If they actually keep this pace up, they could be up, because obviously yeah. Sonoda in P8, it was a poor race for Danny. Um, obviously, yeah. he came back this weekend, yeah. took the car over from Lawson again. Yeah. Um, and if Danny can kind of get on form, yeah. they really could be on for this constructors fight. Yeah, they really could. Um, and I think you said a good, good thing there. You know, yeah. Danny is his first race back. I mean, a sprint race, yes. a sprint weekend for his first race back probably isn't the best. Like Chuck him said, in the deep end. It is. It is. You've yeah. got one practice session. Like you've not got that long to get mm. used to the car again. Um, but so yeah, it just wasn't a good race from his perspective. But no. if we see him improving and becoming the Danny that he always is, it will be great. It will be great, and, will and be. we really could see them up up there in the constructors. Mm. I Absolutely, think. I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but going on to Williams, great result and yeah. great result. Look, I have been crit critical of Logan Sargent this year. He hasn't been performing well. Uh, he has been a rookie, but obviously he, he still needs to be performing in a car that has been able to get points on multiple occasions. Mm -hmm. He had a good race. He really did. And look, Albon had a five second penalty, but so Sargent was within two seconds of him at the end. Yeah. Um, and look, double points finish, pushing them further towards that P7 in the constructors. Um, obviously the P7 was due to, uh, the double points was due to the disqualifications, mm -hmm. but still, you've got to be there to get them. Absolutely. And um, yeah, it was a good race. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And I mean, yeah. But that, yeah, I don't, I, no. <laughs> I think it's safe to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's good to see Sargent. I mean, we've said a lot about Sargent in mm. terms of, yeah, he's a rookie and we've been really critical of him. Um, but it was good to see him actually doing well and being close yeah. to Alex. And especially his home race as well. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, it was yeah. great to for him to have a good, his first good weekend since Bahrain, I think, yeah. um, at his home Grand Prix, obviously helped. Yeah. Um, and yeah, look, fingers crossed for Sargent that he can, um, he can get kind of closer and closer to Alex's pace. Obviously, his contract isn't secure. No. So, who knows what could happen. Um, exactly. But, yeah. And that'll be it. Yeah, that'll be it. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and we will see you for next weekend.